Hey coders, welcome back to the full app walkthrough series. When we last left off, you guys had a bit of homework, uh, aka a lab if you are part, if you are a student in Gravity, right? And the lab or your homework, if you're just a viewer on YouTube here, was to create a single blog component screen. I got in the screen wired up with you guys. We had this button press navigating there as well as passing along a route parameter. And that route parameter happened to be the ID of the blog we click on. Therefore, we can follow the same logic that we were doing in our entire curriculum, essentially. Every, I've, since you had learned everything about how APIs work, you began doing get all and get one requests. And we're just doing a get run request and we navigate to the single blog screen. So the logic that you guys have been running has pretty much not changed. Right, granted, some of the rendering obviously has. However, ultimately, uh, I safe typed my piece of state where my blog is being called into. I prepare my tags piece of state as well so I can have my blog tags be rendering on this screen. One thing that is a little bit different, however, is remember when we did our this.props.navigation.navigate, we passed in something called item ID camel case colon ID. I thought that was a syntax requirement for this, but it turns out it's not. So I actually shorthanded this down to ID colon ID, meaning the prop I'm, the parameter I'm passing is called ID. And because the property and the value have the same name between my blog's ID and the property name of ID, I can shorthand it down just to ID. And with that little refactor now, my this.props.navigation get param can be short and uh, shortened down to just ID right here instead of item ID, right? And that makes it a bit easier to read and to understand where this information is coming from. So yeah, we do our same thing where we try and make a fetch request to our single blog API endpoint. I also have an endpoint for my blog tags for a certain blog. So when I say get this blog's information, also get its blog tags information. I set those pieces to states. I console log an error and I alert an error as well like this. If something happens to go wrong, which we can demo potentially later on. And after that, I just do my normal routine. I destructure properties I want for a nice clean render. Um, I do some styling in a view. I add some text into a text element. I use Moment. If you haven't seen it before, go to Moment.js and Google and look up their documentation. It is a fantastic tool to take this underscore created date time column, like a MySQL date time, and format it into a very clean looking date quickly and easily. I render my tags inside of a view and then I have a view below that, there'll be the body of my um, components. So like in terms of things I've used that we haven't talked about already, is just views and texts. The only unique thing I have used is this badge um, component that I got from React Native Elements. It's almost like a bootstrap pill or bootstrap little badge that you can customize and style. I'm making that my tags. In terms of styling, nothing really magical. I kind of hacked and slashed the solution together that includes some margins, some coloring, some text aligning, padding, font sizes, um, some flex directing and things like that. Nothing that you guys don't know at this point that you couldn't hack and slash together. So your single blog page at this point in the video and curriculum might look a little bit different. That's okay. I want you guys to play with it and learn, not just copy exactly what I'm doing every single time. Taking a gander what it looks like, I'm gonna make sure my simulator is running correctly and the code's running by refreshing the page there. And I'm gonna get the covalence is life, which should be blog ID one demo. And there we go. It gets a single blog, it gets the tags for it, and it just renders it to the screen. It's, it's kind of simple looking. I stuck to the 80s kind of pink and green and neon theme here. And you'll notice that it does scale based on what we're clicking on. So I didn't just hard code that to work for the purpose of this video. If I click on return to the code walker, or return of the code walker, I get a different set of tags, different title, and a different set of lorem ipsum text as well. So yeah, okay, awesome. We can we now have a very simple app. I mean, someone could download this, check out our blogs, and read them. We could deploy this to the store, but we're probably gonna add some more functionality before we do that, right? But yeah, the logic, same thing you've been doing to this point. Now, we are going to begin building out a login screen. So let's go ahead and make a new component, or new screen component called login.tsx. We're going to import asterisk as react from react, like so. I'm probably gonna wanna bring along a couple of these things right here. So out of laziness, I'm gonna just copy and paste them and modify them as I need to. And we're gonna want our JSON utility as well. Uh, we'll see if we need to type anything on this screen. We probably won't at first, and we can start building out from there. I just know at the top of my head, I'll probably want style sheet view and alert. I'll need text and I'll need button from React Native Elements. And that should be enough to get us going here. That's the key, right? 
I'm going to go ahead and write my interfaces for my props and state. Like so. I'm going to go ahead and do my export default class login extends react react.component pass in our types. They must have a render return at minimum and we're going to do a view and I'm going to copy some of that code maybe from this style sheet. So I'm going to copy the style sheet even though it's a lot and just dwindle it down to what I actually care about and just remove all this real quick. There we go. That way it's kind of sitting in theme with how I've been using my application so far, what has that gray background that I'm extending. Styles.container, and let's put in a text tag in here. We'll make it, since it's a um, React Native Elements text tag, I can actually use this H1 feature right here. That's a prop I can do on React Native Elements text, but not React Native, so keep that in mind as you progress. That says login screen, just to give us like a good visual indicator that we're currently where we want to be. So I'm going to give this a inline styling of some margin of like 20 just to make sure it's visible in case it's not hidden anywhere. Just This is like a quick test setup. I want to make sure I actually import everything here correctly, save the file, and wire it in. So let's go to our app container where we had our login screen, or rather our uh, stack navigator, and we're going to be wiring in the login screen to it. So I'm going to import the login component we just made from this directory screen slash login. I'm going to wire it into my screens object here, and I'm going to change my uh, navigator object to have an initial, initial route name of login now. So I want to be automatically going to the login screen and not somewhere else. That way we can begin building out the screen quicker without having to constantly refresh the application, go back to the home screen, and navigate our way back in. I'm going to refresh the code here. And good, we have our login screen. Probably forgot my header title there, so let's copy that over. Remember that was a static navigation options property, which means we're going to have to type something from React Navigation after all. So I'll go ahead and copy my import to my login screen. And I'll go ahead and copy and paste over my navigation options. Be lazy developers and do that directly like that. I'll get rid of the unneeded types from right there and we'll say this is going to be login. So let's make sure we haven't broken anything too badly quite yet with that little refactor. Okay, we are good to go. So let's start building out our login form just a hair. Um, I'm going to have this overarching view that's going to be my flex one view container. I'm going to have a view that's going to kind of act as my form. I'm going to have another view that will be the button below that form. And this is just a decision I'm making right now. You don't exactly have to follow this word for word. If you want to go ahead and pause this video now and try and build out your login screen and come back, that's something you could do as well if you're looking for extra practice. I'm going to go ahead and do some inline styling just to get this done quickly here. I want this guy to have a flex of one for now. And you know what? I'm also going to say this one wants a flex of one. And if you guys have ever played with these view tags, and their flex properties. If both of these guys are in a flex one container and both of them are flex one, they should split the screen evenly with any luck anyway. So in here, I'm going to be using a button element, which is self-closing from React Native Elements. They have several props we can do. And again, you can go look at the documentation like we did before on, um, what do you know, buttons from React Native Elements. And there are several props they can take along with container style for modifying the container and position of its, itself, the button style, like the padding of the inner text and things like that. And there's something called a raised, I believe, that we can pass as a Boolean prop on button to give it kind of like a, let, let it pop off the screen just a hair. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to have raised as a prop. We're going to need a title for sure, which will say log in, right? We're going to have to also give it a container style. And I'm just going to give it a hair of margin to see what it looks like. I'm going to go ahead and add this button style as well. And this is where we did our background color. I'm going to have it be the same color that I have been using so far, which will be AE3CD7, I think it was. Yeah, we'll see. It should be that kind of like neon pink 80s vaporwave button I've been going for so far. 
Checking out what that looks like now. Save the file, refresh the code in the simulator, and we got a login button. So like this is where the form is going to be, and this is the container for the login. That's why I chose to do that view, uh, the flex one on two views. So now I know I have two halves of a page ready to go. That way, if anything has to happen below the login button, maybe some notes or copyright material, contact form, trouble logging in, reg go register here. Like I have like a layout ready to go on the page I can kind of mess with and scale with later. So we need to do an on press handler on this button as we learned that is the, what we're supposed to do instead of on click. And I want to see if this button even works. Do I know it's going to work? And I can add on later some kind of class method that will handle logging in. But you're wondering, how do I actually test a console log on our simulators? On Mac and OS machines, I think you can just type in and you open up your uh, control panel for Windows, it's control M, I forget what it is on Mac OS, just look up the documentation. And there should be something allowing you to do debug JS remotely, and that's what you want. If you click on that, it should open up a new Chrome screen that's attached to this Metro bundler, where it's bundling our JavaScript code, where it will allow us to console log stuff just like we've been doing so far. I have this odd issue that I have to debug on my computer where it can't find Chrome with the debugger. So what I'm gonna end up having to do, and I end up founding this on the debugging section of React Native, which, like I've been saying, read your errors and go look at the documentation. Evidently, I'm supposed to, it says it will open a tab to do this, but mine doesn't for some reason, so I'll be figuring this out later. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and go to that local host 8081 debugger UI, open up my debugging tools. You see I've been here before because I already have my dark theme, yes. Uh, I'm going to maintain priority of this tab, and its status is still waiting for something. So I'm going to see if I can't hard reload this code and see if it will recognize that we are in this Chrome debugger or not. I unfortunately might have to start and stop everything again, so let's just give that a shot. So when in doubt, just restart everything, and it's not uncommon that you do this several times throughout your build process. So I'm restarting my entire React Native run Android. I have the debugger open and ready to go. I'm waiting for my app to open and it should, there we go, check it out. We've now hooked into that debugger. Waiting for it to finish bundling my code, there it goes. And our fun ultimate test here, the whole reason I drug us here in the first place is so I can click on this login button and bada bing, we got test outputted in the console. So this is how you're going to be testing and if you want to look at what type of values your state has. Is your button wired up? What are you submitting? And if we're like post request or something like that, and you, you know, you would use console logs kind of regularly as a new student all over the place. Um, but this, if you want to do them in React Native, this is how. Awesome. So now with that test being done, we're actually going to make a class method that will be logging in for us. It'll be asynchronous called handle login. And it's going to do a try and catch here. Just my normal stuff. We're going to log the error if it exists. We're also going to alert a message. We're going to say alert, do an alert that says um, problem logging in, contact your admin. That way, you know, if it messes up this badly, then theoretically it's probably an issue on our server's end, so they should be able to con be told to contact an administrator saying there's probably a 500 error going on right now and they should probably contact an admin. Otherwise, you can also catch for errors that maybe they provided invalid credentials. You could do that. Um, but we're just gonna make a generic alert here just to catch that issue. I'm gonna say I want to eventually log the result of an await JSON, which is that utility file we wrote for running fetches uh, cleaner and easier. It's going to be to my, my deployed API blogs route. So if you're in the curriculum with us at this point, you should have something like this as well, where it will be to your Heroku app slash auth slash login. That was the route I had written on my express server. And that is going to be in a post request. Oh, that's a string post request. And we're gonna pass along eventually some kind of object that'll probably be tied to some inputs in our code here. But for now, I'm just gonna hard code this as a demo to see if we can't get it working. So I will say there's gonna be an email. I'm gonna hard code it to be a test email that I know works in my deployed database. With an email of luke at skywalker.com and a password of use the force, if I can type. And with this, this is now hard coded. So hopefully if I click this button, 
We're gonna console log result as well, just to confirm that it responds with a token for logging us in. And I'll come down here, remove this console log, and bring in this dot handle login. Should execute when we click the button. And we're not in the form. This is not HTML. We don't have to worry about doing any kind of event dot prevent defaults. The button just is pressed and doesn't refresh a page or something like that. It doesn't refresh the app when you press the button. So no worries about events and event dot prevent defaults. I'm going to refresh this page here. Click and go back to my debugging tools. The console's been cleared. By refreshing it right, it'll actually clear the console and you'll see these pop up again. I'm going to click on login and if everything worked correctly, we should get that our API's login response on successful login, which was a token with a role and a user ID. And there we go. Check it out. We got a token, a role, and an admin. So like we have a token. So now just like I did before, we would use something like local storage in our other applications, but we're gonna not gonna want to do that. We're gonna be wanting to use something called async storage instead. And I think I'll be going that going over that in the next video. I'm gonna go ahead and know since I'm happy that this worked this way, I'm gonna need some pieces of state that are gonna be this instead. So I'm gonna come up here and write my constructor to prepare my state object. And I have to do props where we pass up props. I'm going to super props. Then I have access now, thankfully, to my this.state object, which I'm gonna have to type up here. Saying I'm gonna have one called email that will be a string. And I'll have another one called password, which will also be a string. There we go. So I'm gonna go ahead and type those in here and give them some default values, email and password, like so. Then we're gonna come back down yonder and I'm gonna actually have to import my input element from React Native Elements. Now, there are two different kinds you can use. If you want the vanilla React Native one to figure out how to style it and keep it simple, you can use something called text input from React Native. And notice it takes a value and an on change text handler. That's how you mess with inputs in React Native compared to what you were uh, used to doing with browser-based components. So on change text and something called value, or you can also come here and use this cool little input from um, React Native Elements. And it just gives you a couple extra props on top of the vanilla input. So we can use icons rather easily. We can do um, some error handling and error styling as well. We can mess with the container and input style container. This just allows us to do some cool, and it allows us some ex like extended use of that text input, right? So let's go ahead and start coding a couple of those out and see how far it gets us. So I need two input fields here inside of this flex container, right? I'm probably going to want to, I'll just start cutting them out. We'll figure it out when we get there. Cause I'm trying to think ahead of what we can stay ahead of. I'm gonna have two, one for email and one for password. I'm gonna keep them simple for now. I'm gonna say this value is going to be tied to the piece of state of this dot state dot email. Similarly down here, I'll have a value of this dot state dot password. Cool. And I'm gonna be new lining these attributes as I make them, right? And so we need a on change text handler, which is going to run something and run a this dot set state. And this is where we need to type our event. Ooh, actually don't know how to type this. We gotta think for a minute here. We have an event like that, and we want to actually set it to a piece of state. Maybe we don't need to. Let's see what we can get away with. E.target.value, which I know is not correct. So we actually need to have instead, ooh, I'm trying to remember what it was. On change text. Oh, it's literally, <laughs> that's what I was forgetting. It's literally just text. That's it. It's not an event. There we go. Cool, now we're good. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and just copy this guy and paste it in on this row here where we need to do password instead. And looking at the React Native elements, let's see, we can do something with icons if we want. 
I know some of the font awesome icons, for example, password, which I was looking up earlier. So we know that one's called key. Uh, if we wanted like an email of some kind, we can do an envelope. So maybe we can do this envelope and see what that looks like. You know, just kind of playing around with it to find something we like. We can do this at symbol as well. I'm going to go with uh, envelope here and see what it looks like. So we can actually, I'm going to bump these values and on changes down since these inputs are going to have some style we want on them now, right? So let's give it a placeholder, which will say email. This one will get a placeholder that will say password, like so. Um, I'm going to add some style on, let's see, I think left icon. Yeah, that's the one we want. We want left icon. And that is going to be some inline styling where it needs a type. And the type is font awesome is the library we're using of icons. And it's going to have a name of, this one was email, so I'm gonna use envelope like that. I'm gonna go ahead and copy this snippet of code and do the same thing on the input below. And instead of envelope, I think we had the name of key, if I'm not mistaken. Of course, we're gonna find that the hard way if I'm wrong, right? And these guys will actually be nested like directly against each other, which won't look very visually appealing. So what I'm going to do, well, actually, let's just check it out before I do that, right? Let's refresh the page here and check out what it looks like. Yeah, right at the top of the page there, kind of offset, thanks to that margin. Uh, right, oh, we didn't add any margin to it. Never mind. it's just nested in the flex. It looks, it looks pretty okay. But I'm going to go ahead and maybe add on my justify content center. We can do an align items center as well. Save that file, check out our form now. And it nests in kind of nicely, right? Like I said, the, the both the inputs are kind of right up against each other, so we can maybe add some more style on it, where we can do a container style, I believe, we have on here, and I can say margin vertical. So if you're wondering how to do margin Y, like you had from Bootstrap, you can do such a thing. And I'm just gonna give it like maybe just a hair of vertical margin. That way they both don't just sit on each other so closely. There we go. Cool. Just a little bit of separation, make them look nicer. Maybe you wanna wrap this in like a border with a card and some background. I'm gonna keep it real simple for this demo. Obviously, I encourage you to go out there, experiment and goof off and find out what you can do, right? So moving back into my code now, what we're gonna to need to do is instead of hard coding this value, I'll say just send along this.state.email and we'll need here this.state.password and hopefully if everything's wired up correctly, we will get our expected result. So I'm gonna come back to my debugging tools, refresh the application. I'm gonna go ahead and this time manually type in luke at skywalker.com or if you're looking for a real native experience, use your mouse to finger press the letters on your keyboard there. Use the force, and I believe there is a secure, um, like a, uh, this is a password type input field that we can pass as a prop. We'll have to look that up before we uh, have a plain text password appearing on somebody's screen. But the test here right now is, yeah, we wired up some inputs and we have now provided ourselves a token via the login button. So now we can actually dynamically log in and not cause too many issues. Awesome. So if I wanted to make this a password type, I know there was something down here. Notice like how many native props exist on the text input. So if you do choose to use the React Native Elements library, you know they have some props for themselves, but also look at the React Native component it's essentially building itself on. Because we can do not autocomplete, so we don't probably want that in a password field. We don't want autocorrect. Um, yeah, there's a whole lot you can do on here. And I know there's a prop we can pass somewhere down here. Uh, da, 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 da. Let's see, let's see. Hmm. Password. I know we don't want it on autocomplete. All right, text content type, that's what we want. So that's a prop that we can do username or password stuff on. Just make sure you read your documentation for what you can do. So by default, it's set to none. So we can set it to, let's set the bottom one to password and see what we can get generating here. So it's text. I literally just looked at it. Text content type is the proper looking for. Text content type. And it looks like it took a string value of password. There we go. 
And while we're here, we might as well do the same thing up top. So text content type equals string email address. Let's save the file, refresh our code once again, and let's confirm that when we log in, it officially gives us what we were looking for. Again, this is a token. Make sure we didn't break anything on our code, right? It's always a good test. So refresh the page here, everything looks good. Email, luke at skywalker.com. Password, use the force, which didn't do anything for us on the password security in view right there, which is the whole purpose of trying to figure out what that was doing for us. So clearly we must have missed something that talks about the keyboard type, but if I actually want to protect the password now. Ah, here we go. I think that's what we're looking for. There's keyboard type, keyboard appearance. Man, this is not going well, is it? It's one of my favorite time during a video recording when I can't remember what prop I'm looking for. Granted, I'll probably just be better served just by going to Google and trying to say text input password. Let's just do that then. Ha, that's the prop we're looking for. I knew it was something like that. Just overshooting what I was looking for. So let's add that on this guy. There we go. And once again into the wild blue yonder, we're gonna refresh our code, check out our debugger, make sure it's still connected and not broken. Good to go. Type in the password, use the, there we go. That's the kind of, that's the kind of user experience we're going for as developers, right? Not showing a plain text password in an input field. Now I don't know if I typed it in correctly though. Yeah, did, cool. So that is a little foray into how to get your text inputs wired up. They still tie to a piece of state. They have to be controlled inputs. They have a piece of value that they're tied, their value is tied to a piece of state. They have an on change handler. This one's called text. You can literally use the argument text as your set state right there of what someone's typing in from the keyboard. And these inputs can have a lot of custom styling on them. So you, as developers from the browser world, you know there was, you can type, type password and it automatically did that stuff for you. A couple extra hoops we had to jump through here. Uh, button on pressed runs a handler that does the same thing you were doing in your handle logins in your full stack blogs using the, the React boilerplate. So I'm gonna go ahead and drop this video. If you guys want to go ahead and begin building some other screens, go for it. I'm gonna show you guys how to use async storage instead of local storage in the next set of videos. So we'll see you then.